I'd like to start off by saying that the more information that you have in regards to the physical properties of your foam or any other material that you have, the, the more likely it'll be that you have a straight wing with the least amount of effort. Because of the scope um, of this project, the immense quantity of information that you must acquire and that we must digest to make this easy for you, it's nearly impossible for us to have sufficient foresight to write into the plans, to write into the script of this videotape, all of the information that you need when you need it. We will attempt as we go along, as we learn information, new information that will help make this easier for you, we'll turn that around and back plug that into certain uh, tapes that we produce. Um, the particular point I wanted to cover this morning in regards to this tape is that before bar sanding, you need to assess what your foam cores are doing. We center cut our cores, as I mentioned before, but there is minor inconsistencies from billet to billet that we cannot control. When we bond them together, we negate some of these flexural qualities, but they're still going to be different from wing to wing. So when you first get your wing cores, you take them out of your flashings, put them on their leading or trailing edges, and with the help of another individual, place a straight edge from one end of the wing to the other on this core down the spark cap trough. Find out which is the low side, which is the high side. If your wings are absolutely straight, then you needn't be terribly concerned about which side of the wing you do first. If they're absolutely straight, you can, you can weight your wing cores down into their flashings on a dead flat table. If they are not, we would encourage you to sand the crowned surface, the high side, first. And place weights on the opposite ends and then carefully sand down without using too much pressure the midsection first. Then when you flip your wing cores for the opposite side, weight them very heavily into the other side of the core so that they are held in the straight condition because you will have generated a straight side on the side you sanded. When you finish the opposite side, you'll have taken all the tension out of the cores and you'll have them dead straight. After you get done with the sanding process, pick them back up again and check both surfaces with a straight edge to see that you end up with a straight core without dishing on one side or a high on, on the opposite side. Carefully assess this before you go on beyond the sand out section of this tape. We'll, not try, we'll try not to belabor you, belabor the repetitiveness. We'll do a little review here. One of the first things you, well we do, is we'll remove these for you. You won't have drywall screws to remove. We have to remove them or we're for the tape. Minor holes, small gouges that you'll find in your foam core are of no great concern. You'll backfill them with dry micro just prior to your layup. They don't represent structural or weight problems. You want to make sure that your surfaces are well slurried first. Endeavor not to get slurry in these holes. You want to backfill them with the dry, the driest microfill you can manage. Now we're going to start the sanding process here. And we have this sanding bar with one end that's without sandpaper. We have twice, almost twice as much surface area here as we have on the outboard end. So we're not going to spend as much time out there with sandpaper as we would on this. I'm also not going to put as much pressure there so that I sand that area slower. Well, we certainly know we don't need to spend any more time here.
spend half your time standing and the rest of your time looking. We're very close here. This whole end is very close. Well, I'm obviously riding on that end, so I'm going to switch my block to the portion that will not sand to that end. template on both ends. Let's get a look here at how it looks. I don't know if you can see it there with the tape. But we have almost a perfect parallel. We're missing here about the thicknesses of three sheets of paper in the middle. We really haven't sanded much in this area at all. template on both ends. I have an 80 grit block here as well. I didn't show you that in the earlier sections. It's not absolutely necessary, but I would recommend it. it gives you a finer surface on your foam. And I would prefer that you spend a little more time on your cores than less time. riding on the surfaces of the templates before I am no longer. Check your temp, check your sanding bar, dead straight. Definitely riding the surfaces now. section is most definitely complete. Now we're going to go for the spar cap section. that occurred right here. And Sergio, would you get a close-up of that, please? We're just touching in this area here. There was obviously a slight divot in the middle, but we are touching in the center, which gives us a very straight spark cap. And we can check that right here again. No gap. We're not really sanding foam in this area, from here to about here. We're just touching the upper edges. Now we go back, and we're riding on that end. That finishes in that area. Now we're going to move our weights. 
adjust aft. Have the spark cap trough. And we'll go for the forward section. We're not going to show you the other wing sand downs because they're identical to this one. But we are going to go to the, the next process, which is cutting the leading edges off. We're going to show you some things that you need to address that may not be immediately obvious. This is BL, the rib that I'm pointing at here is BL 55.5. And the core section is the most inboard section of the, the wing. The opposite end is BL23, which is adjacent to the engine compartment, the cowling. We have a relationship between this rib and this rib that is unusual um, in that there is a tremendous change in plane from this area to this area because of the change in thickness in, in the wing's taper rate and the spar's taper rate. And that translates into a twist in this area. When you go to sand this with a wide sanding bar, like this one, and Sergio, can you step back just a little bit and look at it from a little higher so they can see more of it? You can look down, there you go. What you need to do is if you're, if you're trying to stay on it, you can see I'm sitting on two different surfaces of the sanding bar. So what we do is we go to one edge of the sanding bar and sand diagonally like so. You can hear me riding on both templates. We are riding only on this section. So we've got it rotated back up about a half inch off the surface. This is a this is a parallel surface nearly, so there's no there's no need to, to do anything but perfect parallels down from one end to the other. Not nearly so important at this end as it is in this area. Done with a 36 grit. I hope again you can see this on camera. But this area here was just lightly touched by the sander. And take a mental note of what these areas look like on your wing. So that when you af that after you put your carbon fiber on these areas and you fill and sand, as you begin the sanding process, you notice that, ooh, I've got more fill in this area and fill in this area but you'll recollect the reasons why. There are going to be some minor imperfections in the surface. There'll be less of a shock if you do this mental survey of your wing. This area did not get sanded. This area did not get sanded and it's slightly below contour. when you're riding on top of foam. You just don't feel anything cutting anymore. Okay, thank you. It's set up with this particular block. The template BL23, it's precise length from this point at the trailing edge to this point on its upper surface is very critical. If you discover that when you put your templates in place on your foam block, that the block exceeds the forward face of the shear web, take a small sander and remove foam from this edge. as a reference. 
the geometry from this point to this point to BL23, the angles will be consistently cut at the shop. But if in the bonding process between this block and this block, that more micro ends up in here and it's not a bit squeezed out, then you need to reestablish this distance from here to here. Very, very important. After the templates come off, you can, you can take a straight edge bar sander and sand some of this to a, a more accurate relationship its entire length and bring this back to a straight line from here to the other. To make this process as simple as possible for you, the builder, we've managed to create some complexities that uh, don't always have what I would call graceful uh, ways out of them. And one particular situation is that we have bonded the cores together for you. And this reduces work for you, but it also provides you in one particular area, and one area only, a need to cut through an epoxy bond line where you need to remove the leading edge from the shoe web area. Have you got that on, on there yet? So what it forces us to do is hot wire to the bond line from one direction, pull the hot wire, hot wire to the bond line from the other direction, or we could hot wire to the bond line, remove the, remove the um, hot wire unit in a way that doesn't burn away excess foam. So what we'll do is hot wire to the, the epoxy bond line and then kill the heat and back it out as quickly as we can so we don't burn away extra foam. Then we'll take a small bandsaw blade, hacksaw blade, put it in here, cut through the epoxy, bring the wire in cold, and then make the pass down the side. Now what I've done here is I've jury-rigged this in a fashion that holds it up vertically. Two blocks of foam and some weight. I have another wing section on the other side that supports it from the other, from the other side. And I have a straight edge on both sides. And you can clearly see where, where you have bar sanded to the edge of your template where your cut line is. You take your straight edge and you butt it right up against that and back it off about the width of the wire. Can you see that on the tape? right in this area. And you did the same thing on the opposite side. We used drywall screws, a six foot straight edge. We drill it about every foot and drop them in place. Did the same thing on the opposite side. You make sure that, that this edge and this edge are the ones that are most prominent. I'm going to look a little foolish here when I climb up on top of the table. But nonetheless, it's the simplest way of doing this. Make sure I have sufficient clearance. Which is going to guide me here. Make sure that I'm on both surfaces. Okay, go ahead. We're, we're right now we're set at 20 volts. I'm on. Okay, go for it. Need to pull this edge back in to be on the phone. There you are. Okay, it wouldn't matter. It's a straight surface. Go for it. Okay. You're on. We've dealt with this in other method, with other methods in the past. This is the first time we've actually done this with two straight edges. There's um, nothing about it that's trick or new. It should work quite well. But we were fighting with the fact that we didn't want to have to have you build a full-size hot wire to cut this. The one that you'll be using will be a short affair, about one foot of two by four, and two small pieces of, of, um, of tubing, EMT or chrome moly, if you want to get fancy. Okay. Kill it. Yes. Now we're coming back out again. Okay. This worked perfectly the first time. We're up against the epoxy. In this area, we'll take a hacksaw blade now and cut through there, and we'll be back with you in a moment. We didn't really intend at this stage to uh, have you privy to an experiment, but, but after we turned off the tape last we spoke, we realized that what's different about this is that we are directly against micro and only micro, and that we're not really concerned about burn down. 
So we're going to try another experiment, first time on tape. Hit it, Satchmo. Here under the course. And we're going to hit just the micro, sawing action a little bit. Seems to be working very well. Cutting through the micro. If this doesn't work exactly as we've prescribed here, I don't know why it's not going any faster since we're past the bond line. Well, obviously, the experiment was so miserable and uh, so failed that we forgot to turn the tape recorder on, the voice section of this tape. So we are going back from the other direction, finishing the cut, and then we're going to show you how we repaired this uh, this experiment. And we've we've gone to a longer hot wire bow and and uh, changed this process considerably. Now that I've removed the leading edge. I'm uh, going back to the extrusions, or the uh, straight edges, sanding it flush. Then I'm going to remove this, the damaged area on the foam side. Cut it out with a, with a hacksaw. Make a nice, neat depression. We're going to show you a repair. Quick and dirty. I made a little mistake last night. We're going to show you how to repair it. There's some damage to the outboard leading edge foam block. This is the bond line. We made a cut last night. Not very successfully. And I'm just going to do a real quick repair of this and show you how, we can, how that can be accomplished. Normally I wouldn't bother to mark this, but for your benefit, I'm going to. The depth on this side like so. And what I'm doing at the moment here, I'm going to turn this around. There's the depth of our damage on this side. I'm going to cut equally, remove on this side. I have to use your imagination on this one. I'm just going to cut a, a depression out of this that's the same depth on this side as that side.
will do at this stage. Chinese jigsaw. Just ask that. Fit fairly well. We had a pretty good fit on the opposite side. We've described this before in the plans about how to mix five minutes. equal size dollops and I'm getting a little too much on the right so I compensate by adding more to the left. That should be more than sufficient. the shot we're adding phenolic micro balloons at one point we thought that this would be a solution to a number of our problems standard micro is uh, doesn't have anything in it that holds it together and uh, when you mix it a lot of it goes into the air you need to take precautions with it this is another experiment that that um, works for some types of epoxies but not all there's a mixing problem with regular epoxies and the uh, problem is that they slow down the cure of standard epoxy. So I'm going to do a quick and light prime of the area for the five minute. Very thin. five minute is don't under mix the material if you do you won't be able to mix enough in a short enough period of time to prevent the material from going off on you while you're mixing another batch you won't make it maybe on a 50 degree day but never on a standard temperature day we have enough on here where we don't have to prime the opposite face, providing we have a good fit. Let's squish this down in here. We're going to weight it down, and we'll come back to you after this cures and show you how to trim it down in here. On, okay. The uh, you've saved your little cup. You've checked your epoxy. You notice we use the bottom of the cup. These things never seen service, so we save these cups for mixing five minutes in the bottoms. The material is about 90% hard. It's certainly hard enough for us to be able to work with it. So we come back over here. We move, remove our weights. We'll do a quick and dirty removal of foam on this side. Now, I am intentionally tweaking the blade up away from the surface so that I don't hit the surface. Now I make a quick pass on this side. Be cautious, it's always easy to take off too much. I'm going to ride on this surface. I'm 
without taking off material here or here. The five minute is still a little rubbery. So we're gonna remove the five minute with a knife, take it off flush. And then the same thing on the opposing surface. Same thing in the front. Now this is a, this medium is such wonderful flexibilities as far as what can be done to it and how minor errors can be handled. If I dug too deep in the removal of this foam, I wouldn't necessarily have to repair it immediately, just prior to doing a glass layup, if I were putting glass over this, if I dug too deep in this area, I could put a, a small amount of dry micro in a depression to repair it in an area. Now we've got it flush on all areas. I'm gonna do a light scuff with 36 grit, take the edge off of it, the edge off of this, I'm going to move this leading edge closer to the camera so he can do a, a refocus on it. Let's swing to this upper surface. We have a pretty close fit here. And on this edge, we have a small hole here. Just like the holes down here from screws, we're going to fill that with dry micro when we're doing our laminate process. And we'll show you that when we're actually laminating. This portion of the tape, we're going to show you the process whereby we remove the inboard end of the wing for this inboard. This is BL23, characterized by a very thick airfoil with a round cut 10 inches forward of the trailing edge. If you look at this end, you'll notice it's much thinner, narrower. This is the outboard end of the inboard block. This is the inboard end of the aileron torque tube cut out. So we're going to we measure over one inch. And here we measure over six inches. That is relatively straight. Very light pressure on the pen so that it doesn't deviate the, your straight edge. Wouldn't if it were a more substantial straight edge. Now I'm going to go to the opposite side. I'm going to measure one inch wide here. To the top. do attempt to um, preserve the integrity of the extremities of your block. You notice I've dinged this a little bit. This edge represents, the foam represents basically a jig upon which your glass is going to go. If you have a, an edge like this damaged, it won't support well the laminate that you put, that you put out. There are ways around this um, the foam is going to be removed in this area later anyway, and it's not a terribly important juncture, but do try and preserve the integrity of the perimeter of your blocks. Absolute precision in this area is not paramount. The general rule is one inch, six inches. I'm gonna cut this off just using a regular cross cut saw. But on the line on the 
down to the side. Still. I'm wandering a little bit on the opposite side. Now, if you have somebody working with you that can hold the blade. Coming back to dimension, it's close enough. We're about to go through a micro bond on the opposite. Now we're through the micro. This is the surface that was cut earlier, so we're going to put this on a table saw in this position. We're going to approximate six tenths of an inch and go around the entire perimeter. Now watch what happens here. And so jog down. We'll just average that across that corner. So you're going to be thicker than six tenths here. here. I'm going to come to here. Now, be, as you can see, when I go onto the, get onto the bandsaw, this is going to be thin, and the forward section is going to be very narrow. So we might, we might want to consider doing that in the opposite direction, because if we don't, we won't be able to get the foam block out when we're trying to remove it to work on the interior. So we'll flip this over and do it from the opposite direction. We'll take the bandsaw out into the uh, shop and show you how we make this cut. When we cut this, this is going to come apart here in some areas. We don't have a full bond in this area. When you do your glassing, you'll backfill unintentionally with resin that'll run down in here and finish the integrity of this bond. It's already far beyond the uh, level of bonding that it actually needs to be. And we'll get to the bandsaw now. Okay, we're back at it again. We're going to uh, cut the shell open. What I'm going to do is we have an opening here that was cut for the torque tube. So I'm going to open it up with a little bit of pressure. I'm going to slide that over the, the bandsaw blade so that I don't have an increased number of cuts. Now I'm, going to, I'm going to watch the sides of the foam block here. I want to make sure that the edges are not tilted toward the opposite face. I want the blade to parallel my cut surface. And if not parallel, uh, go from narrow here to wider on the opposite side. So it's better to tilt the top toward the blade and the bottom away from the blade inside of the cut. Um, so just keep an eye on that. There's no hurry with this cut. Start the, start the cut.
important about this cut is not the center core, but the perimeter. We're going to bond this back together again with five minute epoxy and small nails. Hook it back in together and then we're going to bond it back onto the inboard end of the core from whence it came earlier. Don't go to too much trouble to true it up because you want it to go back on in the same fashion that it came off. If you spend too much time on it, you'll change the original relationship. Just scuff off, scuff off the loose material. This is the only thing you need to do in preparation for your bonding. Scuff off the loose materials on the inboard end of your, the outboard end of your bond. was a wasted mark, wasn't it? And it will go back on in this fashion. You can use five minute epoxy if you wish, or you can use West Systems epoxy mixed with a micro balloon mix. We'll get back to that in a moment. Now we're gonna do a little micro mix here and West Systems resin. If this were the other stuff, we'd have dust all over the place and micro everywhere. But this just, I can't believe how well this mixes with resin. I've been doing this for 17, 18 years. And I stayed away from this for God knows what reason. But now that I'm over 40, and my lungs look like an old gravel pit, I can only guess. Health concerns are some of my better, bigger concerns. This is amazing, just amazing. here so I don't smear this around too much. I believe we mixed too much. Sergio asked me, he says one shot? I said nah two. Well, Sergio was right. One shot would have been more than sufficient here from micro. Wherever you can avoid going with, with large quantities of this material, better off it will be, because this container is going to exotherm on me if I don't get rid of a good portion of it. It's going to go off in a hurry. could have been done with five minutes for the very accomplished. You have to know precisely what you're doing and not make a single fault in any of your, your preparation. Otherwise you will never get the epoxy on before it hardens on you. I'm not bonding this jig edge either. Really unnecessary. We give it a little shake and part the resin to the opposite surface. Stays in place. And since we sacrificed this later, we just need this here to hold things in place. nails here for attachment need not go through the epoxy portion of 
And let it stabilize, get an idea of where it's going to go. And of course, I miss entirely. Come back up a bit. Okay, get it to stay where it wants. Get it where it is. Force the nail through. An assistant would help here. He's in, he's doing video at the moment. here is flush. Not above, not below, just flush. faces. Not a lot of material. See this? Uh, smeared epoxy on the table. In this area. We don't want to spread it around. Just before bonding this on, I'm going to add a, enough material to span to the opposite block. There were gaps in these areas when I took it apart. I would like to eliminate those. The most important part of this is this face right here and the height on the spar cap faces here and here. And make sure that they're flush and that they're back in their original positions. Slightly out of plane. Don't be at all resistant to putting it where it belongs. Thank you. 
might be tempted to do things like fill this corner at the moment. Don't fill that corner until you're preparing to do the glass work in this area and then fill it with dry micro just prior to, to your layup sequence. You need one more nail in here to bring this flush. It's just a little on this side. We'll be doing a layup in here later on in this sequence. It's about two or three days of work downstream. Once we get the wing skins on and spark caps on, not in that order of course, spark caps first, skins following. We'll be doing the shear web layup either tonight. immediately by the attachment of the leading edges and then rejigging and followed by spark caps and skins in one operation. And this moves along very, very quickly.